All right, greetings, Bellinger fans. It's Wednesday. Wasn't that fun yesterday taking the New York State uh, field test for living environment? They're not even going to call it living environment anymore. After this year, they're going to call it life science colon biology, just like we used to in the old days. Anyway, that was fun. New York State thanks you for your service and taking that test and so they can field study some questions that the kids who take this class in future years will have to take when they take their regents exam. Of course, uh, we've also been working with frogs, which has been fun as well. We'll finish that up in lab. And then uh, we started talking on Monday about the idea of succession. And you need to know the two different types of succession and a couple of other vocabulary words that are associated with it. So let's talk about that today. Succession. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S -S. That's the way we spell success. Succession. <laughs> Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. You might learn on time. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. Two types of succession. Two. Two. Is there one type? No. Two. Two types of succession. But both same thing. It's the change in an ecosystem until you get to um, a climax community, right? So changes that occur in a regular sequence in an ecosystem until you get to the climax community is what we call succession. And there's two, two types. The first type happens on brand new land, brand new land. And we call that primary succession. Where, brand new land, where might you find that, you ask? Brand new land, like volcanic lava flows that turn to rock, brand new rock on the surface of the earth waiting to be colonized by living things, right? Brand new earth, right? If, when it happens on brand new earth, we call that primary succession. Primary, brand new, primary. First time anything's in there. And that's gonna get, um, basically turn this rock into whatever the habitat is, it's supposed to be there, right? So we've got this lava flow, it's rock. Once the rock cools, things will start to move in, to grow on it. Things like lichens. Right? Lichens are an algae and a fungus that kind of live together and they like to attach to rock, adhere to rock, and they start to break the rock up into little bits. So lichens start the process. They're called the pioneer species because they're the first to move in in, prior, in primary succession. Lichens, the first to move in in primary succession. Right, And then they start busting up that rock and making a little bit of soil, paving the way for other lichens to move in mosses and scrubby kind of vegetation, right? It takes a long time to turn lava rock into soil. And every time a new plant moves in, it does its bit by growing its root systems in between the cracks in the rocks and breaking them apart and that kind of thing. So yeah, we call those first uh, critter, those first uh, guys to move in, the first plants are called the pioneer species. There's some succulents, yeah. Some more little kind of scrub vegetation, pioneer species. Okay, so you start with bare rock. The pioneers move in, right? Lichens and mosses and stuff like that. And then as the lichens and mosses move in, they turn the rock into soil, right? So soil is a combination of broken up pieces of rock and the dead remains of things that had lived above it, right? Once you've got soil, you can grow grasses and bushes and types of things so a lot of shrubs and then you can finally get to whatever's supposed to be there whatever the habitat is supposed to be right in primary succession this may take a thousand years two thousand years ten thousand years depending on where it is secondary succession is when a place that already existed is destroyed and then it comes back a second time secondary right so we think of most of the time the destructive events are things like forest fires Right? Fires are very destructive and they burn most of the plant life and they leave, displace or kill a lot of animals and those kinds of things. And when a fire's over, you're left with bare, burned ground, but there's soil there. And that soil is ripe for new things to move in. In some ways, you can think the soil's been replenished with the ashes of the dead. Right? So we've got 
this kind of soil, it's bare ground with soil, and then um, we can get, again, first species to move in are usually small scrubby things like grasses and ferns, right? The pioneer species. We always call the first things that move in the pioneer species, right? Then we can have smaller scrub bushes, and here we got a field of, uh, of pine trees moving in, right? Right, so those are intermediate species. When you get to the end, what it's supposed to be there is called the climax community. Climax community. So we start with disturbance, the pioneers move in, intermediate species continue, and then finally it ends with the climax community. In secondary succession, this will only, only take 50 to 100 to 200 years, depending on where, the, where on earth it is. We've got today two types of succession. We've got primary, secondary, and the other words you need to know are pioneer species and climax community. You think you know those words? Then you're right on it. Okay, today we're going to be look, taking a little trip to a place called Treetops Valley, which is a story of secondary succession. And you're going to go and read the story. And you're going to see what happened to the forests and how long it took for it to come back. And so that's what you're going to do in class today after your Ed Puzzle lesson. All right. All right, let's have a great day.